Well, welcome back to part two. Um, and, and I understand for those of you going to fast forward part one, I'm okay with that. You're just going to miss a whole lot. Ah, but, and, and I do understand. Uh, so you don't want the basics, the background, the, that, that's okay. Uh, for those of you who did watch part one, grab a cup of coffee. Give me about 30 seconds to do a real quick review. So, oh, by the way, don't forget to, for those of you who didn't hit one, subscribe, comment, share us with your friends, and you can contact me. You, you know that's always there. Okay, well, here's what we ask. 200 proof, 100% alcohol by volume. Is it possible? Well, the answer is yes and no. Um, we have 90, your limit. Uh, if everything works perfect, is 95.6% alcohol by volume, which is 191.2 proof. We, we got that. You're going to have 4.4% water in your distillate. That's all there is to it. Okay, that, that, we know that. Uh, you can test it, challenge it. Do, do what you want, but that's it. That's your limit. Okay. Uh, we have, in this test cylinder, we have a 168 proof. Uh, that's one quart. You'll see the values, 32 ounces. Uh, and we worked out, uh, mathematically, we worked out that 16% of this is water. Of this 32 ounces, 16% is water. So that's 5.12 ounces or 151.4 milliliters. So we know that's what brings this to 168. Here's what we theorized. In part one, we asked, we, well, if we took the 84% and we had 16% water, if, like, if I could just remove that 16% of water, would I have 100 proof uh, or 100%? Well, well, certainly you would, but our challenge was we can't use heat, because if you use heat, you see heat, this is the vaporization point of your ethanol, and this is the vaporization point of that 16% water. So if we used heat, and we know how heat does, how heat generates that movement, and it causes the vaporization, the separation, and of course, there you go. Uh, we know that if we heated this up, that we would surpass this, that means that this would leave. And we don't want that to happen. So we got to work it backwards. Ah, okay. Let's start from here, uh, just a second. These are the two molecules. And they can be measured. Uh, when, now, when they're measured, uh, matter of fact, what they're going to do is we can, measure, we can measure the distance across them in length or size. And the way that's done, it's done in a laboratory, of course, but the, the, the uh, unit used is known as a nanometer. And that equals a billionth of a meter. A billionth. That's really, really tiny. Now, we're talking about a molecular level. That's tiny. Now that's one times ten to the negative nine. <laughs> Can you imagine being that guy in a lab who's got to sit and write all this out? Uh, it, and if he had to write that, he, he would write he'd go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1. Decimal point. That's how big that thing is. That's how tiny it is. What we use is a tenth of that. If we broke this down into 10, uh, they use a scale called an angstrom. So here's what we know. Okay, We know that a water molecule which is that oxygen and hydrogen, we know that that puppy is 27 nanometers in size. 27 nanometers is 2.7 angstroms. Just makes it a whole lot easier, okay? Just makes it a whole lot easier. Keep that in mind, okay? Keep that in mind. Here's what I need to show you. Oh, and I've got that right here. Now, when I show you this, please don't be confused. We've got water, 2.7 angstroms. That's an angstrom. Really, really small. Uh, this one's 44 nanometers, 4.4 angstroms. And this is ethanol. And this is methanol. 0.9 angstroms. Now, it should all come together. That analogy about the 8, the 12, and 18-year-olds on the dance floor in separating out and being connected. Now, their sizes are very, very critical for our next step. What we do in order... Oh, you're going to love this. 
we're going to use what's known as a molecular sieve. And a molecular sieve is like, uh, you're familiar with a desiccant bag in some of your, you know, your electronics or things that you get in the mail. And what's that do? That, that absorbs the moisture so that there's no moisture in your product. Um, it, this is also known, a molecular sieve is also known as a desiccant of a different nature. Um, instead of absorbing from the atmosphere of uh, water molecules, what it does is it does that on a molecular level. So it's not as much a sponge as it is an orifice to collect. Mm, mm, mm. Now, watch this. Let's say, for instance, I have a screen, very, very, very tiny screen. And we already know that water is what? 2.7 angstroms. Okay, we know that ethanol is 4.4 angstroms. If I have three angstrom holes lined across here all over the place, everywhere, and there are only three angstroms in diameter, okay? That's their size. And I pour water and ethanol here, or even methanol, because methanol is what, 3.9 angstroms? What will happen is, in this three angstrom hole, that water molecule is going to go right through that hole and drop out. Okay? Uh, your methanol is a little bit too large for that three angstrom hole, so it's just going to sit here and wait. Your ethanol, same thing, it's just going to sit up here. It just it can't get through that hole. That is the basis for how a molecular sieve operates. So what we'll do is we'll take a bunch of molecular sieves and pour them in and we'll allow the water to penetrate these round molecular sieves and they can absorb about 20% 20% of their weight. So it takes a whole lot of them, but the point is is that it will only absorb or allow water into it that gets trapped and of course all your ethanol and anything else that's larger than three angstroms is just going to fall off. Hmm. That's the basis for how that works. So let's move on. All right we're going to add these and here's what I have found, is that uh, when you add these sieves, you're going to have a buildup. There we go. Oh, yeah. I want you in there, not around there. Now you'll see the you'll see the air escaping out of these uh, as the water starts to move in. Uh, let's see if we can get a close up of that. You see, you can see the air that's escaping because it's being replaced with the water. Look at that. Um, so we know now that there's water that's moving uh, into uh, our molecular sieves. We're going to leave that set there for a while until all that activity uh, is completed. Now I want you to look at this and you can see where that's floating. That is 199 proof. Almost 200. So is it possible Absolutely, but what we've done is we've dried the water out of the ethanol, and I'm not sure um, why you'd want to do that, but if for those of you who are in search of pure ethanol, and maybe for a chemistry situation or for other, some other reason like that, uh, yes, it is possible. Is it practical? Well, seeing that I took a quart 
and oh, I'm not going to go to the paper now. I took a quart and I had to use one and three quarters pounds of uh, molecular sieves in order to get it to 199. Um, do you think that I could take a five gallon mash and um, have enough sieves to create a spirit? I, I highly doubt that. Uh, nor is it practical. So, um, yep, it's all, it's very possible, just not practical. So there you have it in a nutshell. I mean, if, if for those of you who want to get to that 200 proof, you want that 100% alcohol by volume, you can do it. Um, and again, why? Now, if you're just hell bent on doing this, um, be my guest. Real simple. You need to get yourself some molecular sieves. That's what they're going to look like uh, when you order them. Just make sure that you order them in the proper size. Now, they'll come in several different sizes. You're going to type in molecular sieve in Amazon or just on your Google search, and you're looking for 3A. That's the size, 3 angstroms. And they come in 4, 5, 6, uh, like 13 uh, for different purposes but you're looking for the 3A in order to make sure that only your water molecule can go through and none of your other constituents. Okay? Good. Now that brings us to a close. We have produced, well, we, we got 199 proof. Um, sure that I could have run it through again. Uh, so th there are some setbacks. Trust me, like I said, it took me a pound and three quarters to get that cork. Uh, and you're going to lose, you're going to lose some volume because you know, of adhesion. You're going to have, you know, as, once you pour it off and strain it, you're going to have some molecules that are going to remain on the outside because of, remember that affinity, that attraction? They're going to hang around the outside of each one of those beads, and that kind of adds, starts to add up. Uh, so you're going to lose some um, don't worry about it. Uh, you're you're going to produce 100%. So there you go. Stay tuned with us because our next video, this weekend, we're going to do a review on a new still that we receive. And this promises to be the granddaddy of all for the home distiller. And we're going to run it through its paces. And you're going to be with us step by step as we do that. And we're going to give it an honest review some feedback and we're going to offer that to you and of course there'll be a discount code for that okay happy distilling